Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel and today we have a look at use async data and use fetch which are the two data fetch and composables Nuxt3 provides for us. We see how they differ, what the similarities are and how we can build one with the other. Interesting? Definitely. Here we go. As you know, data fetching is a central part of your application, no matter if it's from static files or pre-generated results or dozens of other APIs plugged in together. And to do that, especially when using server-side rendering, use async data and use fetch come in handy because the data will already be transferred from the server to the client as they use use state under the hood. Nevertheless, sometimes it's a bit confusing to know, okay, why we have use async data and use fetch? What, how are they related? And what are they exactly doing? So today we have a look in our demo application. We will use use fetch and then see how we can rebuild use fetch with use async data. We also check dollar fetch, which is the fetch API wrapper in the ofetch package, which is also auto imported in Next, and a few other great things. As usual, our demo application is pretty small. This time we only are down to two files. And we have this index here, which could also be an f.view, but it doesn't hurt like that because we will use the route query parameters in a second. We have two functions here, two composables, also inline composables. If you don't know what exactly it is, well, think of it as a composable that you don't extract, but keep in line. Also made a video about that, um, which you have linked right away. And we have two things. First, we have a use other param, which basically just sets a ref in here to the value of one and basically exposes this param ref and also a function to change that ref by just adding or subtracting a value. And we have use query down here, which does more or less the same, but it does it with a page query parameter. Here we use the route and then we say route query page should be set to zero in case there is a non set or is an empty string. And we have the change query function, which we also allow to change the query and then navigate to the different page from navigate to. And of course, then we return these two things. So these two functions are called up here and we don't do much with them right now, but we have these values available. What we do is we can change the values for these buttons that we already rendered. And if you have a look at the browser, this already works pretty okay. So you don't see much, of course, when we increment or decrement the page, that works fine. This is not rendered, so we don't know if it works, but let's just assume it does. And now the data fetching part is missing, right? We don't have anything that fetches data at the moment, but this will change in a second. So before we fetch the data though, we have a look at our API, our result.ts. And in here, what we do is we read the query. This could also be a route parameter or get for the body or something else. But in this case, I just opted for an example to read the query parameters of the API call we do, right? And then we give out the static text, the page, the other param, and the method of the event. So get, post, and so on, so on. And now let's use use fetch to fetch our data. So let's say const data is use fetch, awaited here, and now, very nicely, we already get auto-completion results right here because we use Nitro in the server folder. So we have end-to-end -end type safety. So right here we see data is of a certain shape and that's amazing. And after fetching the data, we only want to render it. So let's maybe put in a pre here and render the data. So far so good. Let's see how it looks like in the browser. Things are pretty nice. We can increment the query. Nothing happens here because we didn't really implement it yet, but we have the data. And the request happens once on the server side. The whole thing is also transferred. And if we have a look in the dev tools in the payload tab, I'll make it a little bit smaller here, we also see right here exactly the data. So server side rendering works also as expected. But now the next thing is what we want to do is actually add the query and the other param to uh, influence that API call, right? And the idea is whenever we push one of these buttons, we actually want a new call because this, these four buttons should trigger uh, new API calls. So how do you do that? Well, back in the code, it's not that difficult, luckily. We have a query option here as the use fetch options uh, provide one. And in here, we can pass an object. So we could say page, page the value, pass the value of the ref, other param, uh, other param that value, and if you've seen the video before that one, you already know that 
this won't work well. Let's have a quick look why. The first call, also if you refresh here or like remove the page query, that works well. Perfect. Great. But as soon as we hit something here and want to change it, it's not reactive anymore. So that's a bit of a bummer, but we can fix that. The reason why it's not reactive anymore is because we pass in the plain value. So in this case, usefetch doesn't even know that page here is, is a ref. We just say pass in the value of the ref, and that would be the same if you say pass in the string at the moment, some, I don't know, some constant here or a number. But just at the moment, when page is evaluated. So the idea here is instead of passing the dot value, we can even pass a whole ref because usefetch allows us to have all these options that we can provide as reactive references or also even with a getter function. So that's pretty cool. Even if you want to say, let's say we have a method, right? And this could also be just to compute it that we can pass in here. So it works, as I said, with most of the options. We even say const method is computed. And then we say, you know what? Um, other param, the value is bigger than two then it should be post, otherwise it should be get. And this works as well. Let's take a look in the browser. And here we are hitting the buttons and seeing finally things change around. And also the method switches here because it is also computed. Now, if we do an experiment and say, let's just quickly remove um, the other param here and actually set the value, what will happen then? What do you think? Maybe pause the video for a second, think about it, and um, let's see if you're right or not. We'll continue now. When changing the query parameter, of course, things happen as usual. But now, when changing the other parameter, nothing will happen unless the other param increases over 2. We don't see it here right now, because it is not part of the request right now. This one is fully static, and it will not be updated. But we see that the method changes when you hit the increment or the decrement button. So now it must be on three because it's post, and if I decrement it, then it must be on two. So even if you have values that depend on each other, in this case, you can use just them if you want to get a request. In our case, of course, we want all of them, so let's just revert a change. And it's nice to see that this also works fine. But so far, so good. I mean, we have use fetch, we know it takes reactive references, that's amazing. We have to write less code, we don't have to do manual watch and stuff, so pretty cool. But how does that translate to async data, or to use async data to be more precise? Let's see if we can replicate the whole behavior and use async data. In the docs of Nux, you often find that more or less use fetch is uh, kind of equivalent to use async data plus dollar fetch. And as I mentioned before, we have a little look into dollar fetch here. So you, of course, know the fetch API that you can use to do requests, but sometimes it's a bit cumbersome to work with and a little bit of the axe around would be nice. So that's why we have ofetch, or as it's important to next, dollar fetch. So with dollar fetch, you do a simple API call through the fetch API with some nice things around, like you can uh, pass in query parameters and they will be automatic stringified. You don't have to check for if the response is okay because an error will be thrown automatically. There will be automatically serialization to JSON if it is actually JSON and otherwise you can also provide that and so on and so on. So there are lots of goodies with the dollar fetch. It is very important to note though that dollar fetch is no kind of composable. So use fetch and also use async data are composables. They should only be called, as you might already know, in the script setup, maybe a middleware or other composables and so on and so on. But they should not be called, for example, in an on-click handler. This is where $fetch shines because $fetch is just a simple fetching function. Think of it like Axios, but nicer, of course. As I said, a wrapper around the fetch API. And that's why we kind of have use async data plus $fetch. So use async data to do anything in there plus $fetch as the fetching library equivalent to use fetch. So let's see how this goes. First, we want to get rid of all that code, but we keep it in because why not? And now we say const data because the signature is pretty simple and even similar. Use async data. And in here we do some stuff. Now it's interesting to note, first of all, the better way here would be to write a key. So we want to provide a key. Use fetch does it automatically based on the URL we pass in and the options here. 
So let's say what we have result here. It's important that this is unique for the application. And then we define a handler function as the types hinted us here, right? So in here, we could say three. Well, not exactly because it has to be async. It's called use async data for a reason, right? So we could write async and then, I don't know, we would have to write innovate or something or just do promise resolve three and remove the async and we're good. Okay, fair. Now, this is not exactly what we want. How about we instead say we actually use dollar fetch in here and fetch our endpoint, right? So how we do that? Well, we pass in the URL here. And now we could say slash API result and we're good. And once again, we get the full type safety because also the types are not only soon for use fetch, but also dollar fetch. That's we also have that auto completion here when we start. Amazing, right? Lots of sugar code around, lots of DX. Love it. But we're not done here because if we have it right now, well, maybe let's have a look and see how far we come. We're more or less back where we started because now when we change stuff, it's not really here, right? But we at least established that things will be fetched. That's great. Back to the code, let's add the query parameters. And here the tricky part starts. As I said, fetch takes query parameters as well. So maybe we say like query and then we say page and other param here, awesome. And we have method and then we say, we can just leave it at method, right? Eh, nope, we can't. Because dollar fetch, as I mentioned, is not in the view or next context. It's really contextless helper function. So it doesn't know of reactive references or updating because it can be used without that at all. And that's why we have to actually pass in the page.value, the errata param.value, and the method.value here. And as you've seen before, that might cause us some problems and we hit the same again if we check the browser. Because in here, now, if we update stuff, it's not reactive at all by default. So if we refresh the page, of course, that works. So if you increment it, then refresh, fine, because it comes from the URL state, but the rest doesn't work. And well, why is that? As I mentioned before, dollar fetch doesn't know about anything around it. So we have to kind of build the DX we get from use fetch ourselves. So you might wonder, why would I even use async data or use async data in this case at all? And the point is, you don't always want to use dollar fetch, for example. Sometimes you want to say, hey, uh, why can't I use query content from Nuxt content, for example, and still want to get that state? Or I use some kind of other fetching library or self built repository pattern that I've talked about a few weeks ago on a video, um, and so on and so on. Use async data basically says, I give you a bit DX around it. I also serialize the state from the server to client with use state, but how you fetch data, that's up to you. But no worries. We can still build the DX ourselves and we'll do that right away. Because also use async data has some options and we will explore them right away. One of them is the watch option here. And the watch option basically says, hey, please watch all these resources. So if you have uh, refs, you can just put them in. Otherwise, you might want to put in a reactive gather function, as I've explained in the last video as well. So if we add these three things here to watch, how does it look like then? How does it work? Nice, we're back. We're back to what we had before. Is it shorter or does it look better? Nah, it's a bit longer for sure. But now we could even switch out the fetching library. We could use even Axios if you want to. And we almost built use fetch under the hood. There are a few more things to consider, especially if you have more and more things. But for example, a timeout that uh, you could specify for use fetch, um, that would be something to consider here. But for example, also requests will be deduplicated already. That will work and so on and so on. So in the end, Use async data is meant as a lower building block. For example, to build your own data fetch and composable with, let's say, total different fetching library if you want to. Nux content is also an option with query content, as I mentioned before, and so on and so on. And here we see use async data is even used for use fetch under the hood. Use fetch is built upon use async data with all the DX that we build ourselves, more or less. Now we know how these two data fetching composables are related and how they work in Nuxt.js. Any questions left? As usual, please type them in the comments, let me know, and I'll happily answer them all. 
Stay tuned, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until then, see you next time. Happy hacking.